I'll begin with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you uh, for this time we have to study your creation, and thank you for this class. Again, I just ask that you'd uh, be glorified in what we do, and just help us to resolve any questions that still remain about this material, Lord. In my prayer, Lord Jesus. Amen. Okay, so uh, here is the solution. So we'll start at the beginning, and I'll I'll try not to blather too long because I know you guys might still have questions about the mission. Um, so first of all, h of x is x times f of g, x f of x times g of x. So I plug in two times g of two, but that's two times five, which is ten. F of ten is given to be seven, so there that is. The, so like when you it plug in a, x of eight. Well, it says h of 2, so I put x equals a 2. Yeah. Now, um, for problem 2, what, let's see here, 2 is where? It's greater than or equal to 1, so I use formula, the second formula, right? 2 to the 4th is 16, 16 minus 10 is 6. Um, 0 is less than 1, so I use this, the first formula, which gives me 2 times 0 squared plus 11, also known as 11. There's that. Now, in the previous section, somebody asked me, um, so this test, this test too, like what's it cover, you know? And uh, he's like, does it still cover test one? And I said, well, yeah, in as much as the material overlaps. And this is a good example of that. Like test one, we learned the complex factor theorem, right? And completing the square and all that stuff, that still matters. And, um, you know, but we know more now. We know long division, which gives us a new way to factor in some sense, like here. So the complex factor theorem says if I know minus 3 plus i is, is, is complex 0, then that gives me a corresponding irreducible or prime quadratic factor of x plus 3 plus 1 squared. If I FOIL that out, x squared plus 6x plus 10 is what I get. So I divide that into this quartic, and out pops x squared plus 3x plus 2. I get a remainder of 0. That's good. If your remainder is not 0, you did something wrong, or I gave you bad information, right? So hopefully, I guess hopefully you did something wrong. I mean, it's better for you if I gave you bad information because then I just have to omit the problem and everybody gets it right, right? But anyway. Um, so once I know that, then that gives me f of x is the uh, prime quadratic times this guy up here, x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now the prime won't factor. We already know that. It co corresponds to a complex 0. But over here, this will factor into x plus 1 times x plus 2, and there you go factored. Any questions about that one? Okay. Um, this one here, sketch the graph of x plus 3 times x minus 2 squared. So I'm like, okay, my critical numbers are minus 3 and 2. I make my sign chart. Um, I have pluses here, minus there. I've got a bouncing. It bounces at 2, right? So then the graph <coughs> looks something like this. Whee! Like that. Uh, the big picture here is that this is a cubic and it's got a leading coefficient of 1. So you know the shape should look something like that, generically speaking. Any questions? Okay. Problem 5, a little bit more interesting. Um, so here we can factor x squared minus 25 and we factor out an x squared downstairs. We've got x plus 5, x minus 5, x squared times x plus 5. And um, so the x plus 5s, they'd be canceling. And that leaves us a reduced function of x minus 5 over x squared. So this means that there's a hole in the graph at minus 5 because we have um, factors that match in the top and the bottom and they're equal um, degree. So that's going to give you a hole in the graph. Um, if you had matching factors where the top factor had a larger power, it also would give you a hole in the graph, but the hole in the graph would be on the x-axis. If you have matching factors and the factor in the denominator has a larger power, that just gives you a vertical asymptote. Um, but anyway, here's my sign chart for f of x, I wrote it. Um, notice I have uh, bouncing is 0. That's not surprising because we've got multiplicity 2 for x squared, but I also have um, no sign change at minus 5, and there's a couple different ways to look at that. Um, if I just look at the sign chart for f of x, it's because I've got 
two. I've got x plus five downstairs and upstairs. I've got a multiplicity of two of factors. That's how the counting goes here, so we don't flip signs. Another way to do it would be, instead of making the sign chart for f of x, instead make a sign chart for the reduced function, which is what I was doing in class more in examples before today. Um, really, the way to graph something like this is to graph the reduced function and then add holes to it as needed. Um, anyway, y equals to zero is the horizontal asymptote because the degree of the denominator is three, the degree of the numerator is two, so the denominator wins. And the whole, we can figure out where that is by plugging in minus 5 into the reduced function. Here the reduced function is this guy up here. So I've got minus 5 minus 5 over minus 5 squared, also known as t minus 10 over 25, which is actually minus 2 fifths. So the whole's about right there. And of course we've got a, you know, vertical asymptote at zero, kind of like an infinite well, if you will. And um, the graph has to kind of go back to zero eventually. This last problem here, again, had a hole in the graph. Uh, we factor the numerator, factor the denominator. There's a common x plus 3. That means there's a hole at minus 3. This time, the reduced function works out to x minus 1 over x minus 3. So when I plug in the hole, minus 3, I get minus 3 over minus 3 minus 1 over minus 3 minus 3, also known as 4 sixths, which is 2 thirds. So the hole is actually at minus 3 2 thirds x equals to 3 is a vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptotes come from when we have a division by 0. <coughs> the x-intercepts, if you've got any, they come from when you've got 0 in the numerator. So here we have a 0 in the numerator when we put x equals to 1. That's why I've got a, an x-intercept at 1. Um, and I didn't ask about it for this problem, but the y, um, the horizontal asymptote for this one would be, uh, would be 1 because it's equal degree up and, up, up and down is quadratic, right? degree 2 over degree 2 and the, re the leading coefficients here are 1 and 1 so the the y um, the horizontal asymptote is just y equals to 1 and so it gives you this picture now I didn't ask you to graph it you didn't have to right um, but I did want this information down here you can't give the vertical asymptote as a point because it's not a point it's a it's a line it's a vertical line so an equation is the right way to say it um, so this was a question on test um, 2 like last semester that I taught this class I think and um, so like I give full credit if you said the vertical asymptotes at three I'd be like okay fine I'd give full credit for that if you said the x-intercept is at one full credit for that but if you said the, the hole in the graph is at minus three I would only give you like half of the credit there because I asked up here to please find its coordinates right and so there's a little bit involved there so anyway there's a preview of a potential test question yeah um, all right, so that's all I got to say about that. Do you guys have questions? So I'm collecting mission two at the start of class Friday, and then we'll talk about the solution to mission two Friday. And then when's the test? Test two is Monday, right? Remember, you get a sheet of notes front and back, right? I mean, you can bring it. I don't give it to you, <laughs> right? So. Either make one or find somebody who cares more about the class than you do and get their sheet. <laughs> but that doesn't really help you unless you understand it, right? The process of writing the sheet is actually where the goodness is. It's not just having it, you know? All right, well, if there are no questions, I guess we're done. Is that right? No questions? No? All right. All right. Nobody? You're like, you're saying we can go now if we don't ask questions. Why would we ask a question, right? So true. So true, yeah. Yeah, we're done. If there's no questions, we're done. Yeah.